What's up, Kissables? It's the Kissable Diva, and I am your love coach and your date night expert. And tonight, you are tuning in to the Kissable Nights podcast, where we discuss everything love, sex, and relationships after dark. So tonight, we're getting into getting along with your in-laws or your significant other's family, right? So some of us don't get along with our significant other's family. And either we isolate from the family and we'll let our significant other go off and do stuff with their family. And, <laughs> or we will go to the functions and they don't end the greatest, right? So in this situation with our, with our couples, they are pretty good situations with our couples. I haven't had anyone that doesn't have a good situation which would probably be a better example however I just wanted to give tips on if you are not having the best situation now they do have tips for those that you know when going into meeting the family or your in-laws um what to do and you'll be able to hear that later on in the show but I just wanted to give one or two tips for those that may not be having the greatest experience when it comes to their significant other's family. So when it's like boyfriend, girlfriend, you can want to be kind of careful of that because it may be a deal breaker for your significant other if they're not able to get along with the family. One of the things that I feel that would be beneficial in the family getting to know your significant other in another way is more like a they call it team building exercises where um maybe it could be like a barbecue if they're all willing and and voluntarily um do these exercises um it, it could be a barbecue where you are having to do a team exercise where they have to work together in order to finish uh a project or result um one of one of them that's something that you could do that's like less cost. Um, but another thing that you could do is uh, if you try the breakout rooms, everybody's going to have to use their skill in order to get out of the breakout room. Now that can go good or that can go bad. I mean, you, you have to, there, there are different types of team building exercises that you can use to help people see a different facet or side of a person to where they would probably gain more respect for them. Otherwise, than finding that one thing that they don't like about them because, you know, you're with my my sister or you're with my cousin and, you know, I don't like this and I don't like that. But if they find something else about you that they could respect or, you know, like about you, then that would change their perspective, perspective of you. Um, so exercises are pretty good to do if they voluntarily do it or you can have a good old sit down and just discuss you know what the problem is if you're able to do that get a mediator if you feel like you need to do that as well but those are for specific couples that don't necessarily have a great situation when it comes to the family if you have any if anyone out there is listening and has of those types of situations where they didn't have the best situation when it or didn't have the best relationship their significant other didn't have the best relationship with their families however you all worked it out it'll be great for you to offer those suggestions of what it is that you you've done um on the blog on kissableretreats.com just go ahead and go to the podcast post for tonight's show and make sure to post or leave a message. There is a place where you can leave a voice message and let us know what it is that you did and what worked for you and your family. Now, tonight, these couples are just going to get into what what works for them. And they're also going to offer some advice if there are couples out there having 
trouble. Sometimes the, the advice that they offer is very good and it reminds you to be true to yourself first and, you know, not to be fake when being around the family. That would be great. <laughs> you know, just basically being true to yourself and being open minded If this is the person that you feel that you will be with or that will be in your life for a while, holidays are coming up. Families are mostly get together during the holidays or during this this time of the year. And I feel like the advice that they give that you'll hear these couples give will definitely apply to you in some way, shape or form. So with that, here are the couples. So let's talk about the in-laws. Do you get along with your in-laws? I love my in-laws. I love them. Um, actually, our my mother-in-law lives with us, which has been really, really awesome. So she moved in. When did, she, when did Grandma Gail come down from Atlanta? Uh, March. March, yeah. So she moved in in March. I, I love it. Um, my father-in-law, unfortunately, passed away two years ago. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, March. But he was an awesome father-in-law. Very, very sweet, very loving. They're both very loving people um because trust me if she wasn't it would be very hard to live under one roof together but she's uh the the one thing that i can really say that i love about her is that she's gonna always allow us to figure us out she doesn't really overstep her boundaries or try to be controlling or um you know try to get jr to do certain things because that's her baby that's her son she's very understanding of our space mm-hmm. and she doesn't overstep that so i think that creates a healthy boundary because i think that's where most people struggle with their in-laws if mm-hmm. i'm not mistaken so yeah i'm good with my in-laws i i like them i enjoy being a mcnab <laughs> <laughs> um i'm the same way anybody that knows me um i come from a big family background mm-hmm. so i really like people um mm-hmm. in general so you know i I have no issues um you know with her family we get along um her brother comes over all the time you know we go out on the boat um her sister recently moved back haiti um but you know i don't call them in-laws you know they're they're added brothers and sisters and you know another father and another mom to Mm -hmm. me so um we all have a great relationship so good so what advice would you give to those that it seems like you have it together. So what advice would you give to some that may be struggling? With the in-law thing? Yes. Hmm. Um, live your own life. Because at the end of the day, um, you chose to be with that person. And mm-hmm. Again, this is from a marriage standpoint. Yes. Um, you know, when you do get married to someone, um, it becomes different. You know, that's your house. That's your wife. That's your husband. Um, their needs and wants come before your your family. Hmm. You know, at the end of the day. Um, so you know, because that you know, because that's who you got to go home to. That's who you got to go home to, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that's who you got to race this race with. Yes. So, um, you know, one thing I I, I, I would would say as well is, don't confide in your family to certain mm. things. Hmm. Um, because you don't want to put that that halo over, you know, your spouse's head. Um, did I say that right? The halo over the spouse's head. We get head? it. We but got you what you're trying, what I'm to, trying say, to say. Yeah. Okay, because I technically do have a halo, though. Yeah, but what I'm saying, I, I said it, then I thought I was like, wait, that's not what I was. You trying don't want to put like that S, like that scarlet letter, right? Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And, and then you know, because one thing about your siblings, they're gonna always have your back, and they're gonna always, yeah, um, as they should. Mm-hmm. You know, m- want to make sure that they're comforting you. Mm-hmm. Um, but and not only that, when we are confiding, we're usually in an emotional state and we're only right. telling our side of the story mm-hmm. right. and making the other person look bad mm-hmm. right. so that's all they're hearing right. they're not hearing both sides they're only right. hearing the, all the bad things that that other person's doing right. so naturally you're going to protect what's yours which mm-hmm. is your immediate family member mm-hmm. so I agree with that It, yeah you have to learn to it's okay, it's okay to confide but it, you have to learn to keep certain things in the home right. and, mm-hmm. and learn how to work it out amongst one another because Sometimes you just can't get over things or right. you get upset because now you're upset and mm-hmm. they've worked it out and they moved on. So right. it becomes too much of a conflict. I absolutely agree. I know you guys aren't married yet. However, have you both met each other's families? Oh, most definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 
what kind of advice can you give couples that are listening um, how to get along or, you know, how to get along with each other's families or in-laws or whatever the situation may be? Oh, I, I, let me jump in here. The best advice I could give a couple on meeting in-laws or your partner's family, mm-hmm. let your partner's family be exactly who they are. Don't judge. Don't comment. Don't ask questions. You know, questions that's out of line, out of place. Let these people be who they are because when your partner comes around your family, you're going to want for your partner to accept who your family is, you know? Mm-hmm. Who the, cra- the crazy one is, the loud one is, who the quiet one is, the weird one. You know what I mean? So um, that's the best advice I would give to a couple. Let your partner's family be exactly who they are. Accept it without judgment, you know, unless they disrespect you that's something different but um yeah let them be who they are everybody's family's different and that's what makes families beautiful mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I agree with that you know let the people let the family let the in-laws be who they are you know don't don't even try to don't even give your partner a heads up about your family or your you know your cousin or how your mom is just let them genuinely, genuinely go in there, meet your mom, meet your dad, brother, sister, cousin, or whatever, mm-hmm. and let them figure out how they want to interact with them. Let them let them see their true colors the way it is, because you can give somebody a synopsis of of somebody, and that's going to cause them to prejudge them. Mm-hmm. So let them go in with a a clear mind on how they want to perceive the other person's family and, and just go from there. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Sounds good. And if they like you, they like you. And if they don't, hey, they don't. <laughs> That's true. You want them to like you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, you guys, that is it. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's show on getting along with your in-laws or your significant other's family. And hopefully you'll be able to use something that these couples have provided for you. And like I said, the discussion does not stop here. Go to kissableretreats.com. Go to tonight's post. Make sure that you post what you feel would be a great way for couples to uh, get along with their significant, with their significant other's family, or um, what it is that you got, you're doing that works for you. You know, just let us know. Don't be afraid to let us know. Or you can leave us a voicemail. Leave a message and leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you're doing or what you think about the show, or anything, any information that you would like to leave. You may hear yourself on the next episode. So with that being said, thank you so much for listening to the Kissable Night Podcast. I am your love coach and date night expert. This is the Kissable Night Podcast where we discuss everything love, sex, and relationships after dark. Remember to tune in every Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And next week, we will have the couples back. But I'm not going to tell you what they're going to talk about. You have to come back and see. All right? Remember to keep it kissable. Peace. <laughs>